Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! MPs are on their half-term holiday at the moment, so you might be forgiven for thinking that we'll be in for a quiet time next week. But not a bit of it. On Thursday, David Cameron heads to Brussels again, where he hopes to finalise his deal on Britain's membership of the EU at what's been dubbed, they always are, the Crunch European Summit. We'll see how crunchy it is. Tim, or Mr Hammond, the Foreign Secretary on Mar this morning, Matthew Hancock on this programme, they both said... Let's see what the final deal is, because there could be more in it than the draft settlement, more for the British government. I would suggest that the draft settlement for Mr Cameron is as good as it gets. That may well be the case. Journalists have been seeking rabbits from hats for many weeks and taking them out, and Eurosceptics have been shooting them long before David Cameron got anywhere near it. There's one thing that Cameron can do, which I understand he will do before next weekend. He, he can explain what he means by this kind of sovereignty lock, where... He gives Parliament, you know, the sovereign Parliament that's will be... All, ex that's all smoke it, and mirrors. It is all smoke and mirrors, but that's the one thing he's got left. It's something he can do in domestic law. They can explain how the Supreme Court here will hold the European Court to the letter of the European Treaty. So it's not even putting British law above European law. It's effectively getting a British court to say that the European Court is not adhering to its own treaties. And he'll, you know, if the summit finishes on Friday, I suspect he'll unveil that either at a press conference or we'll see him doing Andrew Marr next Sunday, and telling the world to, all about it. He is going to do Andrew Marr next Sunday. It, politically, the Prime Minister would be in trouble with his own party if this deal was further watered down at the summit, wouldn't he? He needs it to be strengthened. And I'm hearing stories coming out of Brussels saying there is a rabbit or two. Ah. But whether they're tiny little rabbits or little great big rabbits, ones, I, big plump I don't ones. know. I think this is a campaign that will be won by fear, not by terrific bribes and isn't the deal wonderful. Uh, what Philip Hammond said this morning, I think, was very important, that if we, if we vote to leave... Europe will make sure our conditions are as bad as possible for fear of the whole thing falling apart, other countries peeling off. Uh, I think that's the really serious threat. So the idea that we're going to get this wonderful deal out of Europe or that uh, France will go on being our border guards and look after our camp in Calais, I think it's those sorts of fears that will that we'll win but it. If Mr. And if Mr Sarkozy wins in France next year, he could well change the camp whether we're in or out. He's campaigning on that. Well... He could, oh, that's true. The membership's not... The, next year is next year. <laughs> the problem with all these things, it's like the, the out uh, campaign saying, oh, if we're out, we can do the following. If, if in Europe we'll react like this. None of that is provable until it actually happens one well, way we or the a, other. We had a, a close ally, of, a, a close uh, a, a co colleague of Angela Merkel today warning that uh, you know that it would be that, that it would be bloody our terms if we if we leave. In and why shouldn't they say that? conversation with Bill Cash. But why, sh why shouldn't they say that? There's no point in issuing a threat afterwards. If they want to threaten, now is the time. A German backbencher that we've never heard of threatening <laughs> Britain. Um, which doesn't mean that he's not a good man, just because we haven't heard from him, but we haven't. It seems, I would suggest, Nick, that Michael Gove, in terms of which cabinet ministers are going to go with remain and which ones are going to go with out, it seems that Michael Gove is now becoming the pivotal figure here. The, the suggestions that if, if he decides to go out, and apparently he's terribly anguished about this, that Boris Johnson and Sajid Javid could well follow. If he doesn't, they might not. Yeah, I mean, Michael Gove is genuinely torn. Downing Street were very confident at the beginning of this year that Michael <coughs> Gove would be with the Prime Minister. But, I mean, anyone who's known Michael Gove, I used to be a colleague of Michael Gove, used to talk to him every other day when I was in Northern Ireland for the Times, will know that in his heart of hearts, he would like to get Britain out of the European Union. It is as simple as that. Mm. But he knows that if he campaigns to take Britain out of Europe, what he is essentially doing is joining a campaign which, if it is successful, will destroy David Cameron's career, mm. destroy George Osborne 
Osborne career and potentially hand the Tory leadership to the two people in the Conservative Party he loathes more than anyone else in terms of being leader. Mm. That's Theresa May and Boris Johnson, mm. so he is torn. But you're right, what he does could provide a lead. The thing about Boris Johnson is Boris Johnson, in his heart of hearts, believes that Britain should be in the European Union. But there's one thing that Boris Johnson believes more than that, which is that Boris Johnson should be Prime Minister, and therefore he needs he needs to do what We're is best on for to that, the leadership thing which that. is why he needs this sort of parliamentary sovereignty. I'm grateful for that blinding revelation that Boris Johnson <laughs> wants to be Prime Minister. I never thought, what do you make about Mr Gove being the pivotal figure? If Cameron can keep him on board, there'll be fewer defections other than the usual suspects to the out campaign. I think that's right. I mean, someone described him to me as the sort of the big domino, and if he falls, other dominoes could fall. Um, Cameron is trying quite hard. He had Govin again last week trying to persuade him. What they think they've got is at least an acknowledgement from, from Gove that if he does opt to follow his conscience and say he's going to vote out, that he wouldn't do much campaigning. I suspect he'll do one interview and then sit the thing out. Um, mm -hmm. And they think if he's not out there leading it, that that won't do them quite as much damage. We know Alan Johnson's heading up the Labour effort to stay in. But is Jeremy Corbyn really going to campaign hard to stay in? Is the Labour Party going to spend money on this campaign? I very much doubt it. Uh, it's not in his heart. And his instincts are to pick the absolute wrong issue. This, uh, today, there he is, saying uh, he thinks that Cameron is wrong on immigration. We should have much easier immigration. He shouldn't be trying to uh, cut back the number of uh, EU migrants coming into the country. I mean, that is no way to win it, and I presume he knows it. Uh, it's very important that Labour voters are brought on board. That there Mr. is a Cameron strong campaign. Too, doesn't he? Cameron really needs Labour <laughs> voters, and uh, it ought to be the great, strong, uniting message for Labour, because virtually all Labour MPs are strongly in favour. There's a, f mm. a ma maverick handful. The, 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 major the clear majority the of clear the parliamentary majority. party. It should have been a big contrast. Uh, Labour pro-European, Tories all over the place, mm. and I'm afraid that it's just possible that. Corbyn will muddy that water. His heart, is, his heart is not in it. I mean, we saw what he really felt in the final TV debate in the Labour leadership. When he absolutely laid into the European Union, he hates this new uh, free trade area, the TTIP uh, negotiations with, with, the the, United with, States. The, with, uh, just, with the United States. You know, he just loathes it. But he's got himself bounced into the leadership contest, into saying that he would support our membership, but I will push for reform within. But it's not what he really believes in his heart of hearts. As things stand this weekend, though, few days before the big summit which is meant to clinch it one way or the other are we heading for a June 23rd referendum do you think yes I think almost certainly um, and thank God for that so we can all plan our summer holidays and ministers feel the same and advisors feel the same so never mind about the needs of the nation is you make sure that no I mean it looks very much like there will be some kind of deal and it looks like they may you know give him a little bit more in some areas and that you know, Cameron is, is determined to press on with this. He doesn't want this hanging over his government. This is a guy who every Monday is going out and making a speech about, you know, what he wants his second term to look like. And for the yeah. next four months, no He's one's running out of monkeys about that. it. Uh, absolutely. I, the, the terms would get worse, not better, if it drags on. The rest mm. of Europe will get crosser and crosser with this. And the migrant crisis could overwhelm everything, too. Yeah. Absolutely. June referendum, but one calculation of the Prime Minister was that he thought that, like 1975, the Prime Minister endorsing the deal would begin the process of changing people in favour of it. Mm -hmm. You look at that poll in The Independent on Sunday today, 58% of voters think the Prime Minister is not going to get a good deal, so you may not see that change. Well, let me now be really unfair, because because it is too early, really. But just take a guess. As a nation, are we voting out or in? 53-47 in. 55-45 uh, in. I suppose so, in. I suppose so. I suppose so. We're in, but without much enthusiasm, right. is what you say. Yeah, yeah. We're now going to put these clips into the library <laughs> and bring them out <laughs> on the Sunday after June the 23rd. It'll be fun. Oh my